Welcome to Dev Coffee, and this is build a Twitch chatbot in less than 10 minutes. So guys, to get started, what I like to do is to break our project into small little to-dos. That way it gives us a good idea of what we're trying to achieve. So what I want to use for this is Trello. Trello is pretty much to-do lists on steroids. So the first thing we should do is project setup, which all we're doing is making a blank directory with an app.js file inside of it. The next thing we're going to do is initialize our application to use npm. That way we can pull in packages into our project. The next is to install the TMI JS package and require it. This is pretty much a tool that does a lot of the heavy lifting for us and we'll go more in depth into the documentation as this video progresses. Next, we'll set up options, which is just basic information to get us connected. Generate our twitch.tv OAuth token. This is pretty simple. Just make sure that you have an active Twitch account before we get started. Then we'll create our connection, which is as simple as passing in our options into our client function. So guys, we're pretty much ready to go. All we have to do is add event listeners and write our logic for our bot. This is where the fun part starts. So let's get started. Make sure you open up your terminal or command prompt as well as your text editor of choice I'm using sublime, but you could use something like Atom or notepad plus plus And you'll also notice that I'm here on the node.js homepage If you don't have node installed go ahead and do that right now And also if you don't know what node is I'll go ahead and link a tutorial in the description below that way you're up and running so to get started, what we're going to do is, like we said in our Trello overview, is we're going to make a project. So go ahead and make a directory, and we'll call this Total New Bot. That's what, I, that's what I'm choosing to name my bot. And if you run the open space dot command, it'll open up the directory, and we can drag that into our project. Now we can right-click New File and create a new JavaScript file. We'll call this app.js. And that's as much as we need for a project setup. So moving forward, what we're going to do is our npm init. We'll type npm init. Or actually, what we're going to do is we're going to cd into that total noob directory. And then type an npm init. What this is going to do is it's going to give us a series of different options. We can name our project. We can give it a version. Look at the description. So I could say this is a Twitch bot an entry point, which is app.js, different things. Just go ahead and enter past them and it'll ask you if this is okay and that looks fine, so hit enter. And it'll create us a package JSON file that just gives us a description of this project. That's good. But more importantly, we'll have access to our node modules. So if you type in the command npm install tmi.js dash dash save, as you can see right here, this is the uh, TMI, which stands for Twitch Messaging Interface, I believe, that does all the heavy lifting for us. We'll go ahead and hit enter, and that'll start installing. To pull this project, or to pull this module in, what we're gonna do is what's known as a require. So make a variable called rTMI equal to require, and inside of the string, we're gonna call the name of the node module, which is tmi.js. Good, so now we have our TMI script. And what we can do now is set up our options. So make a variable called options and that will be an object. Inside this object, it's gonna have different properties. Uh, the first property is actually options, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but just go with it. And the property in there will be debug, which is true, run this in debug mode. Next is connection. We're going to use the cluster AWS and reconnect is true. You guys can find these default options in the documentation of TMI.js, which is linked below. And next we'll do the identity. This is re going to require your username. So whatever you named your bot, I actually have total new bot. And then our password, which is our API key. We'll do that in the next step. And the last property we'll put in here is channel or channels, which is an array. So you could connect to multiple channels, but for right now, we're just going to connect to one. I'm going to connect to my own personal one called dev coffee. That's pretty much it for options, but now you'll notice we'll need to get this API key. And I forgot a colon. We'll need to get this API key. To do that, go to Twitch apps 
dot com slash TMI. And that'll prompt you to generate an OAuth password. Click connect with Twitch. And if you're signed in, it will already, uh, it'll just ask you to authorize it. But I'm not signed in, so it'll bring me to a login page. If my internet is working, hopefully it is. There we go. And I'm going to sign on to Total Noob Bot with my password. And the next screen will actually be your uh, token that it returns. And here's our OAuth token. Go ahead and copy this. Make sure not to use this because I probably already changed this by the time this video is up. And put it inside there. So we now have our, pass our username and our password. Now the last thing we need to do is connect to our IRC. To do that, it's very simple. We'll make a new variable called client. And inside of this, we're going to have a new tmi.client, which is part of the TMI uh, library. And we're going to pass in our options. So now we pretty much have our connection, but we have to run one more command, which is client.connect. And that's a function, so we invoke it. So now we're completely connected to our IRC. Let's go ahead and run our, our script. So type in node app.js. And you'll see we're already connected. If I go to my Twitch channel, which something else you gotta make sure guys, go ahead and sign out of your bot because you're not gonna wanna be in, on your bot account or else it's gonna cause problems. Log out and then log into your traditional uh, Twitch account, which mine is devcoffee underscore. And then go to your channel. Gosh, now I want Tostitos. It's a tough life. Now, you'll see here that if I go to the viewer list, in a good world, it will say total new on this viewer list, which it's gonna say unavailable, cannot connect because my internet is crapping out right now. There we go, total new bot. So we are connected and that's good, but it's not really doing anything. That's where the TMIJS library comes in. We have these things known as event emitters. So anytime an event happens and it has a list of it, it's very well documented. My compliments to the author of this library, it's awesome. Uh, we'll want to do a event right here whenever we connect. You'll see that they're doing client on connected. And if you've used JavaScript or jQuery and you're used to the event actions with JavaScript and jQuery, pretty much the exact same thing. So you're gonna do client on and type in connected. We're gonna run a function that does that has the parameters address and port. So it passes back the address and port that you're connected on. And we'll console.log that out. Ye or, okay, so address, we'll just pass in the address. And go ahead and close that out. And then we'll pass in the port just to give us a little visual of what's actually happening. Disconnect from your bot and then reconnect by typing node app.js again. And we'll see it displayed our console.log right there with our address import. Perfect, but we're not really just gonna wanna console.log everything out. We're actually gonna wanna communicate with our chat. Well, luckily they have some commands inside the library that we can use. And you can go ahead and take this out. One of those commands is action, which is essentially just sending a message. So type in client.action, and the first parameter we're gonna pass in is the channel, followed by our message. There we go. Restart the application, and then type in node app.js once again, and open up your chat. And we'll see here, hello, I'm a noob, and you are a total noob. There we go. So we already have a message displaying, but again, we're not interacting with anything, we're just kind of sending a message. What we can do now is go to our events once again, and there's an event known as chat. So let's do that one. Go to our documentation, and we'll see that it has the channel, the user, the message, and then self, which is uh, the person, or which is the bot itself. 
We'll type that in channel user message self. And here we'll make another action. Pass in the channel name. And we'll actually call our user a noob. How about that? So user, and I believe a display name is the property on this. You are a total noob, bro. There we go. We save it and we'll cancel this out. We got our message once again. And if I say, what's up, new bot? It should respond with at dev coffee. You are a total new bro. So there we go. We're already chatting with our bot right then and there. So I could write some commands. So instead of doing this, I could do if message is message is equal to at Twitter. Uh, we'll have our bot. I'll go ahead and copy this. We'll have our bot link them to our Twitter. So www, you know, I don't have that typed out, but it would be something like restart our bot and do our command at Twitter. There we go. It gave us the Twitter URL. Perfect. So you can start writing these commands or anything else such as let's say a game or a betting system or any number of things you can imagine server side. This is really cool. We got our bot up and running really quickly. Thanks for tuning in guys. I know we just went over the basics of building a Twitch chatbot, but if you want a part two that's maybe more in depth, go ahead and comment and let me know. But until next time, I'm Chris Pena and I'm straight out of cookies, but let me fix that. Straight out of